Welcome to a new episode of my remarkable video blog. I'm Marco Arnaudo, Marco Board Gamer, or Marnaudo on Board Game Geek, uh, filming from beautiful Bloomington, Indiana, and telling you a little bit about my gaming experiences, thoughts, ideas, things like that. Um, what happened since the last time that I uh, filmed one of my video blogs? I worked a lot, just a lot of stuff came in, um, just uh, against the stereotype that says that academics have the summer off. They don't, they have other stuff to do that they do not have time to do during the academic year. We do not teach, but trust me, uh, we do have stuff to do and that has cut down a little bit on my gaming time, at least on the gaming schedule that I had in mind. Um, for example, I did not start the my game of the battle for Normandy yet. I really look forward to doing so and I'm definitely going to start with that game later this week at some point. Um, on the plus side, one of the reasons why I did not play some of the games that I had in mind uh, of, of playing was that uh, Phantom Leader uh, Deluxe Edition came in unexpectedly beautiful amazing game and you know what a big fan of the air leader series i am that had to take priority on anything else and then by means of analogy and association i also remembered of a dvg game that i had in my collections on my shelves a game that had been left behind from the from my kickstarter campaign uh, modern naval battles and i got and i gave that one a go too Actually, presently, I'm playing Chancellorsville by Victory Point Games. I should have probably played that earlier this year, since this game, this battle, is pretty much a prelude to Gettysburg. And, well, it is the 150th anniversary of both this year. I just think it would have been nicer and more fun to play Chancellors first and a game about Gettysburg later. I did play a game about Gettysburg in July, that was Columbia, Columbia's Gettysburg, Columbia's Badges of Courage. Um, well, I guess I did it the other way around. I'm enjoying Chancellor's Vid in any case. There will be a detailed review coming out uh, tomorrow, one of the next days. Actually, later in, in this video, you will also see um, the setup of the board, which I filmed, well, some time ago, before I... I started actually playing the game. Speaking of, what is the main topic for today's episode? Um, it is a topic that I took from the comments that were left to my first video where I was asking for suggestions about possible topics and a topic that seemed to interest several viewers was behind the scenes, what happens behind the scenes of my videos, where the places where I film, um, stuff like that. So I guess that today we're going to have a little bit of a narcissistic episode in which I show you places that are dear to me uh, for a variety of reasons, including the fact that I play games there and or film my reviews. And in case you're curious, I think this will show you a little bit more about my activities as a word gamer, as a general gamer, video reviewer, as a dad, a lot of stuff. So, um, let me show you now some footage that I filmed in the last couple of days about uh, places where I game and places where I film. This is the game room of the Game Preserve, the friendly local game store that I usually use to get my games when I can find them locally. Um, they have events here, um, which is great. It is great that there's still a place where people can get together and all well, have their little tournaments or simply hang out. I just love the idea that there are still brick and mortar um, places that not only do they sell stuff, but also have a social life going around them. This being said, I actually do not participate much into that social life simply because of my family obligations. I haven't been able to participate to many events, but in the past I have played games here. I definitely enjoy the space and also I film some reviews in here. Um, the light sometimes can be a little strange because of the neons and all that, but it's a quiet place. During the day you will not find many people around to bother you if you are filming, like I'm doing right now or playing, or just, well, hanging out, browsing the games from the collection that you see there. 
So, nice place. Welcome to my office on the campus of Indiana University Bloomington. Uh, I filmed several video reviews here, um, mainly times that the house was not available or way or times in which I just wanted to change your background. I also play games here um, because students don't come to office hour nearly as often as they used to. All these days if they have one quick thing to ask you they just send you an email I still have to do office hours every week, so there are times in which nobody shows up, and then I just sit there and play my games. Let's have a look around. Well, this is the desk you may have seen in the past. Also, you may see some of my puzzles. Actually, I think this is most of them, yes. I keep most of my mechanical puzzles here these days. <laughs> puzzles and books. Nothing too surprising, I guess. More puzzles and more books, and I think that you have seen this section of the bookcase in some of my video reviews. More puzzles and more books. I am a very consistent person. But now look at this, look at this, this is something I find cool. Uh, this is the drawer of my desk, which is perfect to play small games, uh, especially the three-point games. They fit well. And look, this must have been designed by a gamer. There are even areas where you can put the counters, and you place your board game there. You play it solitaire, then somebody knocks on the door, you close the door, and you take on a very professorial and serious face. I say, yes, please come in. Cause because that's, that's the way I, I talk when I'm when I'm acting as a professor. What is this? Where are we? We are in one of the most important places on my house for my life as a gamer. And not all of the porch, but one spot in particular. That one. That is the key of everything. This is the spot where the mailman leaves the boxes with the games that he occasionally brings me. That is where everything starts, where like magic games materialize. Just looking at that empty spot and thinking of the possibilities fills me with awe and wonder. Sometimes I sacrifice a goat there just to make sure that the gods of shipping are on my side and they don't try any funny business with my games. As we enter through the main door, we approach some areas that are used to play games and to film reviews. This is our dining room, and as you can see, there is a game in progress, a game of, uh, what's the name, Little Circuit, that my daughter Amelia and I started playing yesterday. Then the strategy is just so deep and complex that we decided to take a break, uh, think about it, organize our ideas, and I think we'll, we'll get started again this afternoon after she's back from daycare. I play games with my friends here. This table can be enlarged, it can become quite big actually. It is good to play dust tactics, for example, but pretty much any game, really. I occasionally film in this room, even though I don't like the way my voice sounds here. There's a little bit of echo in the background, but sometimes I have a game set up, and if I were to put it in the, ba in the box, bring it somewhere else, and set it up again, it would take me too long. So, I guess you're trading quality for quantity here a little bit. Uh, part of my game collection, um, a section of it. Now we enter the game room, which is where I play games. When I play games here, uh, there is just a table, a portable table, a foldable table that I put in the middle of the room. It is pretty large. It is also where I keep my games and my comic books, where my daughters keep their toys and games and where we play stuff. And as you can see, I clearly didn't have time to um, clean up, to put things away. But I wanted to give you a sense of how the Arnaudo house may look like in, in real life. A real look at what happens behind the scene. That is, there is a three-year-old and a one-year-old that play, throw stuff around, and the parents sometimes just are too tired to, oh, to go after them and to clean up. Uh, my wife is going to erase my existence from this plan of reality if she finds out that I posted images of our house in these conditions online. So, don't tell her, okay? Let's keep this between us. Um, here is where I play 
games from time to time. I set up a foldable plastic table there. You can see my collection of comic books there. At least the part of the collection that has to do with superheroes. Uh, here is where I film my reviews. It's just larger than, than a table. It's convenient to set up things here and to, and to film things there. And then, what else do we have? Oh yeah, we have uh, well, parts of the background that you have seen in my video reviews. That is the part of the collection with combat games, fantasy games, sci-fi games, war games. That is pretty much, well, some of my favorite games are here. The Euro games are in the basement, or well, in the other room, yes, it's unfair to say that they're in the basement. Some are in the section that I showed you earlier, some are in the basement and maybe there is some sort of subconscious meaning to that. And here you see my home office. You have seen parts of it in different videos. I'm going to show a little bit more things more in detail. It is small, small office, but definitely I think I make good use of the space. There we have comic books, some miniature stuff, miniature rules, scenery, uh, stuff like that. Uh, my desk. Oh my gosh. When I look at it, in reality, it doesn't look all that bad. But somehow when you film it or take a picture of it, you, you realize what a mess that is. But that's what it is. Here we have, oh, the map for the Battle for Normandy. I still haven't had the time to play it, not even to set it up. But before my next update, I will be able to give you more details about this game. Here, I don't even know if I can open this door because there's some mess in front of it. Uh, well, trust me on fade. That box there, that I mean that suitcase there, and there's another suitcase here, contains most of my Dust Tactics materials, uh, most of the miniatures I mean. One of them is for the Axis and one for the Allies. And then here we have a bookcase with uh, pretty much the Italian stuff, Italian literature, which is what I use in my day job. And then more stuff, uh, some gaming stuff starts emerging, uh, magnetic boards, uh, very old books, and here we have an area on the floor where I well, play games, where I play games in solitaire. Here for example I have Chancellorsville, Chancellorsville by Victory Point Games, just set up, ready to play it, I'll play it this weekend, I'm really curious about this game. Uh, I placed it on that piece of plexiglass, as you can see from that unfortunate reflection there. Um, it's a large map, probably the largest map I've ever seen in a game by Victory Point Games. And it is pretty much made of four cardboard maps that, yes, you will probably need a piece of plexiglass to put on to keep them in place. But, this is it. This is where everything happens. Oh, I'm being called. So, my wife is calling. Okay, I'll talk to you later, viewers. So, I hope you enjoyed this little tour behind the scenes of my videos. Now, what's going to happen next in the near future? Well, first, in two weeks, I'm going to Gen Con, and I'm extremely excited about it, especially because it is my first time at Gen Con, believe it or not. I believe it, because I remember, I, I know I never went there. How did that happen? Well, I've been out of the gaming world for a long time, pretty much during my uh, postgrad studies and in my early years as, as an assistant professor at Indiana University. I just concentrated so much on my academic career that I had to uh, give up many things. One of them, my, my cherished and beloved hobby of strategy gaming. And then I came back to it gradually as things became a little less crazy um, in my academic path. Still, for the first year or two, I would play um, any time that I could, but I wasn't into the gaming culture a lot. Um, I would go on Board Game Geek and look for information about uh, 
about games, but I didn't contribute, I didn't really take any active role. And then I started getting more and more excited, I wanted to be more involved. And by the time when I said, well, I really want to go to conventions and meet with more people and play games with other people outside of my immediate uh, range of people that I know, when that time arrived, also my first daughter arrived. And things have been hectic in, for the last couple of years uh, because of this. Now, Gen Con is uh, like an hour, an hour and a half from my home. It seems ridiculous that I didn't manage to go there. Yes, last year and probably the previous year I could have gone for one day. But driving all the way there, playing, looking around for a couple of hours, and then spending an hour, an hour, an hour and a half to drive back home, it seemed more more of a tantalizing experience than a rewarding one. You get a sip of water when you're dying of thirst in the desert, or paradoxically quite a contrary, you are in this place with all sorts of drinks and you can just get a sip from one. Uh, it seemed not worth the effort. This year, finally, I'll be able to be there as someone is supposed to. Not even for the entire event, but at least for a couple of days in which I will stay there and I'll be able to play the heck out of games from morning to late night. I'm excited also because I'm going to meet with Lance and Joel um, for the first time in person and we're gonna play games and I'm gonna win all of the games and they're gonna be very sad but that's their own problem ha <laughs> ha um, other than that uh, the next uh, uh, few weeks uh, what I really want to do is to finally get started with the battle for Normandy the map is right there, I look at it, it looks at me, it reminds me how shameful it is that I haven't been able to get started with that game, I haven't even set it up, I haven't even uh, placed the counters in the magnetic counter holders, shame on me. I'll do it, I'll do it next as soon as I'm done with Chancellorsville. After that, um, I definitely want to play some of the games that I mentioned last time, Roads to Leningrad and or Roads to Moscow by GMT, but um, oh, yeah, I also want to involve you in the decision process that I go through when I choose the next game to play. I want to give you some more control on the games that I play and review. So here I have three games by Worthington Games and I simply don't know where to start from. They all look interesting and promising. Uh, I really hope that they will be good because my last experience with a Worthington game was the, the Market Garden game which was particularly disappointing. In any case, here I have Blood and Sand, Guns of Galicia, which is the sequel uh, to Guns of August, which I played two years ago, I think that's, well, that's then, and War and Peace, from what I've heard, Axis and Allies with Napoleon in it, and Napoleon's enemies. Blood and Sand, Guns of Galicia, War and Peace. Look for information about them, if you don't know about them yet, and then vote, leave a comment, uh, wherever it is that you are seeing this video, 2D6, Board Game Geek, YouTube, then I'll just go through all of these locations and I'll collect the votes and the game that gets most the, the most votes will be played and reviewed, say, in the next uh, two weeks. So I think this is all for today, I think this is pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this episode. Thank you for watching my video blog and my video reviews, I'll talk to you in my next videos. Until then, happy gaming and if you see me at Gen Con, feel free to stop by and say hi.